Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Freaky Tales. It's not Freaky Friday. We didn't get a chance to go live on Friday, so I'm going live today because I just didn't want to miss another week. Uh, I'm trying really hard due to my busy schedule to continue to bring you guys Freaky Tales, and I truly appreciate everyone that has tuned in. Um, it's been a busy week for me. It's been my birthday week. I had a, a friend call me yesterday and told me, Happy birthday again. And I said, uh, my birthday was uh, yesterday. And he goes, nah, it's your birthday week, man. We celebrate you all week. So I want to thank everybody who on my other podcast uh, blessed me. Um, you know, you guys were just blessing me on the live chat. So I just want to thank you guys for blessing me. I like it truly, truly means a lot uh, coming from you guys. Thank you guys, the fans. You guys are the ones that make um, not only my other podcast you know, uh, run, but also freaky tales. Um, this is your guys' podcast and I'm here for you guys. And I, I thank you guys. I love this podcast and I love bringing it to you and I love bringing fresh new content. Um, with that being said, I want to thank everybody who liked, comment, subscribed, everybody who's on the live chat, everybody who decided not to be on the live chat. Uh, you guys are still there. And, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the calls to come in because lately we've been having trouble for some crazy odd reason. Uh, receiving calls, but um, we got that fixed, so we're going to move on. Today's episode is kind of something that happened in around 1978. Uh, I believe that was the year that it came out, yes, 1978, and uh, this was about a man named Rudy Alcala, okay, or you could say Alcala, Rudy, I'm sorry, Rodney Alcala, Rodney Alcala, you guys can look him up, you guys can Google him. This guy was something else, you know. But the reason why this stood out to me was because on today's world and social media, many times we get messages, uh, which we on, on Instagram we call them DMs, on, on Facebook we call them inbox, Twitter, I guess we call them tweets or whatnot. Each social media has its own name for a, a message. Many times people message us and... Um, we don't know who we are. Some of us answer them. Some of us block them. Some of us delete those messages. But we get messages from people who are possibly fans. If you're an artist, if you're an author, if you're a book writer. But we, we don't know truly who these people are. All we know is that we receive the message. Sometimes you can talk to them. You could chat with them and they seem fine. But once again, you don't know who they are. Okay. So in today's social media world, this is what sparked my interest in this story. In the late 70s, and I believe it trickled into the late 80s as well, there was a game, a, a game on TV called The Dating Game. That's what it was, The Dating Game. So before The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, like the, the, the kind of shows that we have today, there was a show called The Dating Game. And here's what happened. You had three seats, a wall, and then a guest, three seats. Th these three men, it could be men or it could be women. If it was three men, obviously there would be a woman, a, a woman here asking them each and every one of them a question. And whoever she was fond of, by the end of the show, she would say, okay, bachelor number one or bachelor number two or bachelor number three. There were three bachelors, okay? Uh, 
every other week they would flip. It would be three women with one man, okay, and a wall between them. So you never saw who the contestants were, okay. So this one was kind of um, freaky, and this is why I'm bringing it to you. Because what the lady didn't know that behind that wall, bachelor number one was a serial killer. How he got on that show, the um, all the homework that I've done has said that the Dating Games producers never ran a background check on him. And he was on America's Most Wanted list, and he actually got on that show. Um, he had did some time already for committing two murders. If you could put up uh, picture number one, please, and let me know when it's up. Okay, that's him right there, Rudy Alcala. Okay. One of the most notorious serial killers in American history is a man named Rudy Alcala. He was also known as the dating game killer because he appeared on the TV show, The Dating Game in 1978. Apart from taking the lives of people, he was also a sex offender. For his crimes, the court sentenced him to death. However, he was additionally sentenced to 25 more years uh, to life after pleading guilty to two more homicides. So I'm going to stop there. So this man made it onto a dating game. We're going to show you in a little bit some of the footage of the actual dating game. So you can see his personality. You can see his sense of humor and why possibly this woman chose him possibly being attracted by the way he carried himself, the way he conducted himself uh, um, uh, towards her. Uh, she picked him out of all those other two men. And um, did she ever go out on a date with him? We'll soon find out. Okay. So let's put up uh, picture number two. Okay. Please. Okay. It's up. Now here he is right here on the dating game, okay? And um, the reason why I thought it was so interesting today is because today when you talk to someone on social media, you don't really know who you're talking to unless you've known them in person and they're friends and you guys communicate and you guys exchange social medias. I understand that, but when you're talking to a complete stranger, whether it's a woman or whether it's a man, they can come at you with a nice sense of humor. They'll send you jokes. They'll send you memes. They'll send you whatever. Before you know it, you start to like them. So liking that social media, like that wall between the contestant and the bachelors, you don't really know who they are. You know, today we call them um, catfishes. Okay. What, what is a catfish? A catfish is someone many times that uh, it could be a man pretending to be a woman. And his whole entire profile is that of, of a woman deceiving men, if you will. Okay. And that's what some of these men do. Now, there's another interpretation of catfish. And most men like to blame women for being catfishes. And what they do is this. They pretty much, uh, these women will take a picture add a filter, make themselves look some, for somehow a lot skinnier, a lot prettier, and they post these pictures up. And this girl possibly in, in these pictures look like um, they weigh maybe 135, 140 pounds, you know, really nice and pretty. But when these men meet these women, they look absolutely nothing like those pictures. Okay, so that is another form of catfish. I think this man, this person, this contestant, this bachelor was fooling this girl by showing his charisma, showing his personality, you know, trying to get her to go on a date to possibly do something to her, you know. So many times, once again, we don't know who these people are behind closed doors. Okay, so let me continue to read it. Let's go ahead and put up picture number three, please. Let me know when it's up. Okay, so here he is, and here he is talking to the other bachelor. So he's right there. He's all smiles. Once again, he's pretending to be somebody that he's not because the guy's actually a serial killer. Okay, 
Now, even though he has been linked to eight murders, this is once again Rodney Alcala. Uh, let me find my place here. It is widely considered that his kill count is way higher than this number. The true number of victims remains a mystery. However, authorities believe that he may might have killed close to 130 people. Okay. Officials discovered that Alcala owned uh, photographs of women, teenage girls, and boys. There were thousands of them and several were in sexual explicit poses. In other words, they, when they uh, went into his home and they found all these pictures of these boys, girls, women, they were all pretty much nude and in different positions. Now, Alcala ended up dying in 2001. Uh, I'm sorry, 2021 at the age of 77. And the reason being was the reason for his death, according to the BBC, was due to natural causes. So this man was, the authorities were looking for this man. Authorities were wanting to find out where this man was. And here he was on a popular television show in 1978. Now, if you guys don't think that's freaky, then I don't know what is, but I really did think that that was pretty freaky. Okay. So now uh, let me give you a little bit of background of when he was a young man. At the age of 17, and you could put up the fourth picture now. At the age of 17, Alcala entered the army as a clerk, but after a nervous breakdown, he was medically discharged due to mental issues. Then the intelligent young man was with an IQ of 135. Look that up. Look up the IQ of 135, and they will tell you that this man was very intelligent. He was not an idiot. He was very intelligent and went on to attend UCLA, UCLA, okay, major university. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Reminds me of a lot of Ted Bundy. A lot of women like to say he had them Hollywood looks. He was charming. He had a great personality, et cetera, et cetera. But the guy was a serial killer. The guy was into necrophilia. The guy was into sleeping with dead bodies. This guy here was probably no different. Now you wonder like, why would he go on a show? Because n number one, not only is that guy intelligent enough to get on that show, but he knew what he was doing when he was talking to this female. He knew what he was doing. That was probably his next victim. Okay. So before we continue to talk a little bit more about Rodney Alcala, can Alice, can you go ahead and play that video for us, please? After the video, you could put his uh, mugshot back up. It's okay. Little technical difficulty. I don't think they can hear it. Can they hear it? Start it over, please. Okay. No volume? Okay. Let me see, just start it over. Just start some. Okay, you guys, well, for some We're going to have a great time together. Goes. It may be the creepiest episode ever on The Dating Game because this bachelor looking for love back in 1978 is actually a serial killer. I'm called the banana and I look really good. No one had any idea that Rodney Alcala had already launched his killing spree when he appeared on the popular dating show. Why Despite Alcala's because weird behavior the on the dating game, The Bachelorette chose him, but never went on the date because she reportedly found him creepy. And lucky for her, because Alcala would later be found guilty of seven murders. Okay, you can go ahead and put his mugshot back up. Was there a picture that we didn't post or did we post all of them? Okay, yeah, you could just leave that up there. So here he is on a dating game, and uh, you guys pretty much got your answer. Uh, he actually won. He actually beat out the other two uh, bachelors to go out with this girl. And the reports say that she never went out with him simply because after meeting him, that there was just something very, very creepy about this individual. Now, I've known people, not as friends, but people that I've met that come off very charming, you know, their personality is great, they make people laugh, 
But there were just some things that I couldn't put my finger on. Like, what was it about this individual that just rubbed me the wrong way? And uh, one thing that I do notice that a lot of those guys that I have met stayed away from me. I think they knew that I saw right through them. And I truly do believe that this woman saw right through him. You know, for religious people, they will call it discernment of spirits. They'll say, I had something told me, or some people will say, I had a gut feeling about this individual. Something was wrong. Something rubbed me the wrong way. And many of us know of people like that. Um, I had this one guy on uh, my other podcast that for some reason, he rubbed men the wrong way and he rubbed women the wrong way. And the women just kept telling me there is something very creepy about that individual. The men used to tell me the same thing. This guy was always trying to get close to me, was trying to be my friend, was always trying to get back on the podcast. I left that guy alone. If you will, I saw the writing on the wall. I saw that myself. There was just something very disturbing about this individual that I wanted nothing to do with. So this woman back in 1978, when she chose him, she immediately knew that once she saw him, that there was something eerie, something creepy about this individual. Now, if you would have once again Google Rodney Alcala, you actually get to see interviews with the two other bachelors that were on the show with him. And they begin to give their testimony up sitting next to the serial killer whom they did not know was a serial killer. Now the cops connect possibly about 130 cases, but he was only convicted. I believe of eight, if I'm correct. Let me look at my notes once again. Um, so you eventually had his history. Oh, I lost my place, but yeah, so he ended up getting pretty much life and on top of another 25 years. But um, yeah, eight killings, eight murders. And um, this person was a very, very sick individual. These are the type of people that use their personality, they use their charm, they possibly use their looks to lure you in to do whatever they want with you. Okay. Once again, if you study the mind of a serial killer, you'll be able to pick up on some of these traits, on some of these habits that these men do or, or women, you know? So bringing it up to date, how do we make this story relevant? Social media is no different. Here is a woman talking to several men, which you can't see. We'll say that's the wall or a man talking, you know, vice versa. Women talking to three men or multiple men or a man talking to women or multiple women, we don't really know who they are. And many times I've heard stories here told to me privately that after I met her, she was just this crazy sick person. She was about to go out with a crazy sick person and picked up on it. Us as parents, we need to monitor who our children talk to because we never know, especially when they're playing video games and they're talking to them because that's where a lot of predators go to talk to children. To, they try to pretend that, that they're younger, uh, we should meet here, you're my friend, and a lot of these possibly weak-minded children who possibly may not have a father or may have a single parent you know, that they're living with might just be deceived into a meeting with some of these people. Same thing with women. You have these guys, or you're gorgeous, you're beautiful. You, you know, I've known women that have told me that there's men, do you have a cash app? I would just like to bless you. And these women start like, okay, well, you know, he's always sending me money. Let me just go ahead and meet with this guy at Starbucks or whatnot. You need to be very careful who you meet. Okay? You need to be very, very careful. There was a, um, a show, I believe it was called To Catch a Predator. I believe that's what it was. And this was a, a, a girl that was pretending to be 13 years old. I believe she was older, but she looked like very, very young. And they had cameras inside the house. And uh, she would go outside. She would tell these predators that she was 13 years old. And they would meet her like online, I believe, some type of like social gathering, so, some type of so, social network. And these were all men, possibly late 40s. This guy was in his 50s. And he went to that house. And the girl calls him in and uh, the girl says, what do you want to do? And he says, can I just get a hug? And she says, like, no, not right now. 
not right now. And then this guy brought his lunch. Do you mind if I eat? And the girl says, yeah, it's, it's fine. I'm going to go take a shower and go get ready. Okay. Then the man comes out to host of the show and tells this man, what are you doing here? He gets all nervous. Well, I just came here to tell her she shouldn't be doing this. Well, they arrested that guy. And I'm going to tell you why they arrested him. Because he brought a duffel bag. And in that duffel bag, he had a bat, he had tape, he had rope, and he had a knife. Now, you could just imagine what he was planning on doing. We don't know what this sick person was going to do with this woman. Okay? And many of you run with these women or run with these men on social media and you don't know who they are. You need to be careful. Many times we see people on social media. Many times, you know what? My daughter hasn't came home. She went to meet so-and-so. My son hasn't came home. He went to go meet so-and-so. And why? Because they don't know these people on social media, but they trust them. Fine, you know what? He, he's cool. or She's cool. And you don't know what's behind that wall, if you will. This woman, good thing is that she had that, that gut feeling, that discernment not to go out with this individual because we don't know what could have happened. Well, we know that he ended up going to jail. We know that he ended up uh, eventually dying in 2021 of natural causes. But how many other men or women are out there like that that have never been caught? Those are the ones that scare me. It's not the ones that got caught that scare me. It's the ones that never got caught that are still out there that could possibly be your neighbor, that could possibly be a school teacher, could possibly be your boss, the people that you never, ever guess. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. And this guy served his community and people loved him. He, he would invite people over for barbecues and uh, uh, people just loved him in the city. And that was John Wayne Gacy. Even for children, he would dress up like a clown and nobody ever thought that he had over 20 something bodies buried under his house. You don't know who these people are. We're too busy looking at people that look mean, that possibly wear a hoodie. And, and, and what we do, we stereotype them. Oh, yeah, that's, that, that's probably that guy. He always has his hands in his pocket. He's always wearing a hoodie. He's always this. And they could possibly be the principal of your school or your boss or the librarian. You never know. And you're constantly giving these people your attention. You are allowing them to speak to you. And there you are not knowing who you're talking to. You know, many times when I get messages on social media, if a person has no followers, if a person has no post, you know, you do the math, you pretty much know it's a fake account. Either somebody's there to troll you or somebody's just there just to uh, make fun of you, whatever the case may be. Many times I get uh, messages where people want to invite me to go look at these. Click on this link and it'll take you to Nude Girl. Some of those could be very damaging to your page. It could possibly delete your page. I never click on any of that stuff. When a woman or a man that I don't know tells me hi, I don't ever respond. I don't know who that person is. And we ought to use a little bit of that wisdom when somebody messages us. I know, I know several men that don't have much luck with women. So when a, a woman uh, um, messages them, they're quick to respond. But you do not know if that person is even real behind that account. Okay, we need to use wisdom. And this woman used wisdom and she leaned on it and uh, she actually lived because of this guy. Um, Alex, let me ask you a question. Yep, go ahead. Um, it, anybody that you don't know and messages you on Instagram or Facebook, whatever, do you respond? No, especially if they don't have followers. Because most likely it's what? A troll or somebody trying to, um, uh, somebody trying to hack my account. Exactly. Or, or they want money. It's important to protect your privacy. You know, like I, I would never go on a, on a show like that looking for a date. You know, I, I would never do something like that. But it was fun for television. 
a lot of people watched it, and there was a lot of innuendos, a lot of sexual innuendos in those shows. Like, for an example, the woman would say, bachelor number one, you know, where would you take me out on a first date? And these guys would try to sweep these women off their feet by saying, I would pick you up in a limo, and I would serve you champagne in the limo, and we'll stand out, we'll stand up, you know, and look outside the rooftop and take it to a fancy restaurant. And the girl's like, wow, bachelor number two, where would you take me? So, so whatever these men say can win her over eventually. So they're trying to tell her whatever she wants to hear so that they can go on a date, and it's all paid for by the Dating Game show. Social media is no different. Hey, beautiful. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, queen. I would love to take you out to dinner. I would love to, you know, meet you. I would love to have coffee with you. Maybe we can go out. And many of you women are believing a lot of these guys, okay? And you don't know who those these men are. We just need to be very, very careful, okay? Other than that, at this time, Alex, I really want to open up the lines, because I want people to either comment or, or um, if you will, on this topic of, once again, Rodney Alcala, the dating game serial killer slash sex offender that took place in 1978, and he had the IQ of 135. If not, then just call in and share your freaky story, your freaky tale, whatever the case may be. I'm thankful that we're live, and I'm thankful to receive calls, so... Let's go ahead and open up the phone lines, if you will, Alex. While he puts up the number, once again, we are talking about Rodney Alcala, the dating game serial killer. So who's going to be our first caller for tonight? And either you can comment on this story, or if you may know a little bit more about this story, please share with us or if you just want to call in and share your freaky tale, uh, please uh, take the time to do so. I want to thank everybody that before they call, because you're taking the time out of your night to be a part of this show. Okay. So, so let's go ahead and do that. What do you think so far, Alex, about this guy? For this guy to have already been wanted for murders and to show up on this television show, what do you think? Um, he's pretty bold, I guess. You yeah. Know, but I, I guess he just doesn't have any shame or like he kind of overcame that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Like he found a way to um, like suppress his feelings. Yes. Okay. Here we got one caller. Oh, you got to connect. Okay. Caller, hold on one second, please. Give me one second, caller. Okay. Um, I should be connected. Tell me when. There we go. Hello, caller, are you there? Hello. Alex, are we up? Yeah. Okay, caller, call back, please. Okay, let's see. Okay, caller, I'm waiting for you to hear we go. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Tony A. Caesar from Paris. Caesar from Paris. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for taking the time. Are you familiar with this story? Have you ever heard this story, Caesar? Yes, yes, I am. I am. Uh, I am familiar with this. Uh, with this guy, who I, I refer him to. Uh, I refer him as the possum shit, Tony. Okay. It's it's uh, how I'm looking at this thing is uh, uh let me see. It, this guy has countless of, of and countless of hundreds of murders. Okay, yeah, yes. easy to say, right? How is it possible for somebody like this, a monster like this, to get a punishment of a secure location where it's fed every day and it's health and dental and entertainment, education, it's all at his disposal? And also because the prisons are a private entity, they're more than ecstatic to have the citizens pay for this. So You're this right. guy, I did the math, Tony. This guy lived 43 healthy years because he died of natural causes. Yeah. So everybody, take out your pink and paper here because for a year, for a 
person to go to prison for a year, it will cost $39,000 a month. Now, do, do the that's 39000 Thirty nine thousand a month or one twenty a day. But at thirty nine thousand a month, forty three years, it comes up to the total of one million six hundred seventy seven thousand dollars for this guy to live comfortable, for this guy to not have nightmares, for this guy to not worry about where his family's at, for this guy not worry about his daughter missing. This guy is literally responsible for hundreds of grief and answered questions families that this guy totally just vanished a whole generation tony yeah generations of people tony people need to look at it like this uh he just didn't destroy the, the victims that he had he pretty much a multiple generations each each girl that he might have killed at least has one baby in her lifetime at least and that baby is responsible and responsible we're talking, so for every victim, we're potentially killing off six people per person. This guy did a lot of damage. He does not deserve to stay alive at all. Us as a country, like I always say, hell in a handbasket. We yeah. protect these people. We make sure that they're healthy. We, we make sure that they're safe, which none of those things he cared about for his victims. Right. He didn't care about his victims uh, being healthy or being anyway. Nothing. He denied him life. I agree. And what do we do in return? You know, all the energy, all the grief of these people crying every day, countless of people. Imagine if we lived on this earth and we fed on energy. We'd be in trouble. Yeah. We'd be in trouble. And it's, and it's, and it's disgusting that this motherfucker's dead and uh, we got nothing better to do but to, to, to tickle his fucking corpse. We got nothing to do but just to tickle his corpse Give him a shout out wherever the fuck he's at. His ears ringing. So uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, but uh, what a piece of shit. I, this guy should have died. So I mean, and this is what I'm talking about, man. Where how are these people staying? See all these guys out here talking about the street. There's this and that. Tomo, this PC, this and that. This that. Here's a perfect example. These motherfuckers are living 43 years in prison. They shouldn't be alive. No, 36 hours, my friend. That guy should be dead. Uh, and I agree. And this guy and, uh, had the audacity to show up on a show and smile. Come on. Come on. It, 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 that, that alone, that alone should just show the, the, poor, the empathy of this, this fucking piece of shit. No empathy at all. Just imagine, imagine the poor girls and what the last fucking words this guy was telling to these people, man. Yeah. Him not giving a shit. Maybe even giving the same grin as he's choking out these girls, man. No good. Uh, People like that should not live, Tony, at all. I believe I I agree with you. I, I I hear you. Thank you, Caesar, man. Thank I you. I mean, and, and you know what, Tony? On a, on a more lighter note, on a more lighter note, do you remember the rap dating game song? No, I do not. Oh, uh, it was back in those days where it was just how you uh, how you said the girls asked each con contestant and then they rap their their replies. You know. Oh. But anyways. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're like Susan from Paris, and I say no to child killers, no to women killers, no to anybody that can't defend themselves killers. He just says, fuck you, and I'm out. Well, you know what? I'm glad he told us how he really felt, Alex. You know what? And I think people should be passionate about certain subjects like that when it comes to harming, uh, harming somebody that's harmless. You know, and uh, a lot of these guys take advantage of people like that. And I agree. I, I think to a certain extent that these people shouldn't live, you know. So, but obviously, I don't take law into my own hands. And, um, you know, I'm not a judge. But I thought this story was interesting because you can liken it to today's social media that uh, we don't know who we're talking to. You know, so um, in my time, I've met some weirdos that were nice on social media. And then when I ended up meeting them in person, the, both men and women, you know, we're talking about weirdos. So uh, the phone lines are open. If you guys want to call in and chime in on the topic, or if you guys want to switch it up and share your guys' own story, make sure to do so. Let's, uh, let's get these phone lines going because it's usually slow in the very beginning. Then at towards the end, the phone calls just continue to c come in. 
So once again, we never really do this podcast on Saturdays, but I wanted to keep it going because I didn't do it yesterday. But with that being said, once again, Caesar, thank you for calling in, letting us know how you feel, and let's see who's going to be our next caller. If not, then I'll probably just call myself. Okay, but um, any, anyways, Alex, you were sharing earlier about um people like this. Have you ever met someone on social media, and then you know maybe you guys? Hold on, I got a call. Call her your name, and where are you call calling my from? Lost phone doc. Somebody called with the answering machine. So, yeah. all right. So let's see. Okay. Um, the question that I was going to ask you, Alex, yeah. have you ever met someone on social media and um, when you met them in person, they just weren't that same person, if you will? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it happens a lot. It happens a lot, especially because you, you, you own a family business these people come at you some type of way, hey, this, this, and then when you meet them in person, it's just something yeah. off or something different and weird about it. So, Yeah, uh, yeah. internet is different than real life. Yes, here we go. Call it your name and where are you calling from? This is Fred from Soledad, brother. How you doing? Fred from Soledad, how you doing? Now, you're not calling from the prison, correct? No, 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 I don't know. No fee before, but I'm I'm living in the city of Solidarity. <laughs> All good, anyway, my brother. No, <laughs> okay, check this out, bro. First and foremost, uh, publicly, I want to say happy birthday to you. You know what I mean? And, hey, best to you as always, bro. Thank you. Second of all, bro, hey, mind you, you're welcome. Second of all, bro, mind real, real, real quick, bro. You know what I find the irony of? What's that? That um, you started, uh, what, the murder, according to what it says, right, in 1977? 78, yes. Right, that's oh seventy eight. I thought it was seventy seven, bro. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, sorry seventy eight. No, hold on. Seventy eight was 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 when he was on the show, and seventy seven is when he committed those murders. Okay, okay, granted, right. So seventy seven is when he committed the murders, right? Yes. So the irony to me, bro, that I'm not looking at it is he died at the age of seventy seven. Hmm. And that's all I really want to say, bro. Wow, I didn't even think about that, but yeah. But, okay, okay, brother, man. Hey, you know what? Wow. So I'll, I'll give you, you know what I mean? I'll, uh, I'll give everybody else a chance to call, man. I just wanted to break the ice. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, you for taking the time, you guys, my brother. You guys have a good night, man. You too. All right, okay. bro. Bye-bye. We'll wow, the irony of that, you know. Um, wow. You know, there are so many, there are so many uh, different stories like this that I could bring up. I have so many lined up. But this one just reminded me so much of social media. You know, and it just reminds me of, of people that trust people on social media. You know, to, to me, social media is what it is. It, if you're promoting a book, if you're promoting a movie, if you're promoting your business, then fine. But trying to find love or trying to find a boyfriend or friendship on social media is no different than that woman trying to find a date on the dating game. And look what she almost got. Look what she almost got. And a, a lot of you have gotten yourselves, you know, deep in a hole over somebody that you met on social media that you had no business meeting. But we live and we learn. So once again, the phone lines are open if anybody wants to call in. If not, you know, and if it continues to go like this, it's fine. I'm keeping my word. We're going to continue to push uh, Freaky Tales, but we'll probably uh, end early. So... Uh, let's get some call-ins. If not, Alex, anything uh, you yeah, care to share? Yeah, I was going to say, um, cause I would say that social media can be a blessing, but it could also be a curse at the same time because, uh, you know, a blessing because you're able to get yourself out there, but a curse because, um, you attract people that, you know, there's, there is such thing as fatal attraction, you know, and yeah. I know this from experience that, there's people that you just can't leave. Right. You know, and or they're just not willing to leave without without a fight or a hassle. Here. Okay, here we have a caller. Your name and where are you calling from? Uh, what's up? Can you hear me, Tony? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, my name is Richard. I'm I'm calling from Northridge, California, actually. How you doing, Richard? Um, good. Over here. I'm sorry, man. I, I'm with my lady at five below, but uh, I just want to say, man, uh, uh, 
Well, well, here you want to hear something crazy, bro. It's on, on a freaky tale tip. My name's Richard Ramirez, bro. No bullshit. So, okay, Richard. <laughs> that's kind of a crazy thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I used to get keys all the time going out the night doctor, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> and, uh, right, uh, bear with me, bro. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm with my lady. We're at, uh, a, at a, I'm in a parking lot right now, but, uh, but, uh, say hi. Hi. Hello. How you doing tonight? It's Tony A. It's from, uh, I see the puppet. Tony A. And, uh, I'm your puppet. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I anyways. Thank hey, you for that. She knows. She knows. Hi. Yeah. Hey, hey, Tony, man, I just want to appreciate all the things you're doing, man. Um, I was sitting in the parking lot listening to your podcast, and you're like, call, someone call in, so I called. But, uh, yeah, man, um, I've had a lot of crazy things go on. Um, I don't know, what do you what do you think of just to bring, uh, I don't know, did you have a certain subject you guys are talking about? Yeah, we're that, talking about or, a, uh, a guy named, uh, yeah. I don't know if you heard, his name was Rodney Alcala. And in 1978, he was on a show called The Dating Game. And he was there to win a date with a bachelorette, a single woman. And he actually won. After oh. the girl met him, they were on the same stage, but there was a wall between them. So she chose him out of two other men. There were three contestants total. And after she uh, met him, she, she said she was creeped out and she pulled out of the date that the show was going to pay for not knowing that this guy had already oh, wow. committed two murders and he was on an America's most wanted list. So what I thought was freaky wow. is how did this guy get on that show and the show never do a background check on him. He goes on there and with yeah. his charm, he wins this girl over and um, he ended up yeah. getting convicted yeah. of eight murders. You know, I, I remember hearing about that, man. And, uh, and, that's crazy. The only thing I could say how he was allowed is that he was somehow somebody, you know, he was somebody up there that people gave him a pass, you know, quite simple, you know, yeah. they let him do what he wanted to do. And uh, then he, then he got caught up, you know, they, they got tired of him like Puffy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, and you're absolutely but, uh, right. You're absolutely right, man. But Colin, you know, uh, um, I truly but, uh, yeah, appreciate there's, there's you. A... Go ahead. Go ahead, my brother. Excuse me. What? No, sir, I truly oh, no. appreciate you taking the no, time no, and calling in. Oh yeah, thank you, man. Um, I appreciate it. And, uh, keep it up, man. Keep all keep all the good stuff you're doing. And uh, I used to bump your stuff all the time, man. I'm back in the day. <laughs> thank you. you. You know what? Starting next uh, month. Uh, yeah, Tony. Thank you. Starting next month, I'm just letting you know. Me and High Seas are going to start touring again. Right on, man. We'll be there. Okay. We'll thank be you. there, man. Have a blessed night. So, 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 all right, man. Take care, man. You Have too. a good night. Okay, let's keep it pushing, Alex. Uh, you were saying something before we got the call. If you if you can remember, um, here we go. Hold on one second. Call her your name, and it's the same. Oh, eight oh eight five eight two two five seven seven zero two. Somebody keeps calling me with a answering service, something like that. I pretty much know who it is, but uh, let's keep it going. Let's get uh, another call in here. Um, so go ahead. You were telling me. Yeah. Well, you just never know who you meet on social media. Yeah. So a lot of people, most of their problems would go away if they didn't have social media. So it seems like as much as you, you get blessed with it, you also get cursed with it. So. You know, and I do want to say something. This guy was a psychopath. This guy could turn it on and turn it off. How are you going to go on a show, try to win a girl over, smile and wear a nice suit and show off your fake personality and then go ahead and do something like that, you know? Okay, here we go. Call it your name and where are you calling from? Tony A. Caesar from Paris again. Caesar from Paris again. What's good? All right, man, let's even really kickstart this thing, man. I mean, people need to liven the fuck up out here. We're all a cult. You know why? It's because you 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 jump on us on the phone calls, and then we, you know what I mean? We don't we don't show for the next day. Mm. Well, you know. Now, that thing, that, uh, that thing, Tony, it was your birthday uh, the, the two days ago, and uh, like always, I had my notes ready to go for you. So since uh, we're a little uh, thin on the callers, uh, I might as well uh, give you a, a little bit of my thoughts on my notes. 
And uh, first, I would like to uh, start off. First of all, I would like to start off with uh, a happy birthday, happy fifty-six. Uh, may the may the world and the earth fulfill you with health, energy, and a long life to be able to finally meet your great grandkids. That's the goal, Tony. Yes. We're trying to make it. We're trying to make it to eighty at least. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> with that being said, yes. With that being said. Here comes your happy birthday song. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Miss Pac-Man tried to get you, but failed with all lies and no truth. So blow out the candles, but don't waste the wish. Because everybody knows by now that Pac-Man stands for pussy and culo, mangled and nasty dick. All good. Thank Either you. For from that. Paris. Happy birthday, Tony. Thank you. And for I'm that. out. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate Caesar from Paris. Thank you for that. Um I believe me, fans out there, I try not to bring this, but when a when a fan calls in, I give them the floor. The mic is theirs. Okay, so but yeah. But you know what, Alex, you could see what I mean by the woman talking to three different contestants. She can Hear them, talk to them, but not see them. It's almost a lot like social media. You can hear them, talk to them, but you cannot see, You don't know who they really are. And a lot more contestants. A lot more contestants. You know, um, it, it's... Okay, let's go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Uh, what's up? My name is Andres. I'm calling from Rancho Cucamonga. Andres, how are you tonight? I'm doing good, man. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. It truly means a lot. Uh, I wanted to share a story. I was working at a Amazon in Rialto, hmm. and I was working with some guy uh, who ended up getting arrested because he was uh, abusing like five of his nieces and nephews, and I used to stretch out with him every day. Wow. How, how long did you work with him for? So I started working uh, at the Amazon, right? And I had switched apartments. So I used to show up to work at four in the morning. Okay. And I would like stretch out with this guy all the time. But he had like a long ponytail. And uh, he, he, I never talked to him because he gave me a bad vibe. Mm. But he used to always tell people that he was uh, stressed out and that he had a whole bunch of kids. Wow. But um, I thought it was crazy how you never know who's next to you exactly exactly uh, before i started working for rouse and compton um i think a couple of months prior um i wasn't there when they arrested a supervisor but they found out that uh the feds went in and arrested this supervisor and a lot of people told me that they didn't like him there was just something about him that they didn't like about the supervisor a lot of people told me i couldn't stand him some people said i hated his ass when the feds went in there they took his computer they arrested him then they came back and told the company what they arrested him for the guy was a child molester and he had child porn and he would watch it at work you never know. Damn, that's crazy. Who, yeah, and, and this is one thing that all of them would always tell me. He didn't look like a child molester. We would have never have thought this. But once again, what does a predator look like? What does, you know, somebody who commits these type of things look like? Everybody's different, you know. You have never would have thought that that person was doing what he was doing. Can I uh, share one more story? Yes. So I used to work at this company, and uh, I had a good coworker. Uh, he was my trainer, so we built a good relationship. But he ended up switching departments, and uh, some years went by, and I switched departments too. But he was working like twelve-hour shifts for like over a year, right? And uh, he, he used to always tell me like, "Hey, I'm gonna get married. I want you to go to my wedding." And for like two, three months, he was telling me like, "You better go to my wedding. You better go to my wedding." And I will tell him, like, don't trip, dog. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna go to your wedding. And then uh, finally, the day came, and I went. And it was a beautiful wedding. I seen him. And uh, he ended up getting killed that night. Uh, two two brothers uh, beat him up with baseball bats. And uh, 
and was this mistaken right. identity or was he wanted by these guys? No, um, it happened in Chino. Um, I guess they showed up to the party and they were just uh, asking for, no, they showed up to the party and they were drinking beer and trying to hit on the girls. And then when the guys realized what was going on, they told them like they had to leave and they ended up coming back with baseball bats. And at that time, my coworkers, uh, family had left already and he saw them. So he, he jumped the gate to go confront them and, um, they ended up killing him that night. And I just thought it was real crazy cause, uh, cause it was right on his wedding night and, that and is, uh, wow. it's going on five years now that it happened. You know what? I just, I, I don't know who this person is, but I want to give my condolences obviously to his wife and to his um, family because well, I've never heard anything like that, especially on his wedding night. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. And also there was a, a rumor going around because the, the girl he married, Yeah, there was a rumor that um, she was married before and her first husband got killed. Oh, wow. But, but I don't know if that makes any, there's any connection to that, but it was just kind of strange. You know what, caller, just really quick, allow me to share something to, to you because it happened in a city next door to me. There was a Filipino woman that would marry these military men. And um, her first husband was killed. She kept everything, obviously. She, uh, um, she was the beneficiary of everything. She married another military man. She flew him to the Philippines, and then she says, I have to leave. I'm going to go back home. You can stay here with my family. Why he stayed there, I have no idea. And then he was killed out there in the Philippines. And uh, rumors have it, nobody's been arrested, but this has been going on for investigation for a long time. That uh, everybody knew that she was behind it because she was keeping everything. She was the beneficiary of everything. Well, one day she came home to her house, and um, somebody popped her in the back of her head. So somebody obviously must have known that she was behind it. So that's what happens. And it's sad that these people do this to people just to take what another person has. Uh, I don't know if this what this girl's motive was, but if that's true, then that makes it a real freaky tale. So thank my uh, coworker. Uh huh. Oh no! Have a good night. No, no. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. You can finish your last one. So uh, my coworker um, that I work with right now, he was telling me he was working at a job and that there was this girl and uh, she was always real reserved to herself. But like out of the nowhere, she started being real flirtatious and that um, she asked him for her number and like Instagram and stuff. And uh, he, he kind of just wanted booty. So he gave it to her. Right. Yeah. And then one day he, she called him when she was drunk. And then he was like, all right, I'll go hang out with you. And then she was trying to convince uh, my coworker to kill her boyfriend. Wow. And then uh, my coworker was entertaining it for a little bit because he, you know, because uh, he wanted the girl. But, but, yeah, she kept pushing for it. So there's crazy people out there. No, there's very, very crazy people out there. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of crazy females out there just like that, man. Crazy, sick, psychopath females that are just like that men and women let, uh, let me get that straight men and women and tonight's rodney alcala is no exception this guy is a psycho was a psychopath so caller thank you greatly appreciate you calling in thank you for sharing that have a good night and have a birthday thank you thank you appreciate that birthday wishes wow pretty wild huh alex trippy yeah um let me ask you this, Alex, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot right here. Yeah. If a female told you, hey, I want you to snuff my ex, I mean, my, my current boyfriend, what would you think of a, of a female like that? Well, that's somebody I wouldn't want to fuck with. Cause Thank you. You're probably going to be the next person. The next if person. She doesn't, yes. you know, if she doesn't like what you got going. Here we go, Alex. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hey, Tony, uh, this is Carlos from Anaheim. Carlos from Anaheim. Thank you for taking the time and being a part of the show, Carlos. All right, I'm I, I think they're all going to get through. All good, my friend. You got a story or you got a comment? 
uh, you know what? I hear your podcast a lot, and it's a trip because, uh, like, at work, um, there's only like four of us. We I work right here on, in Long Beach, right yeah. here close by, by by where you're from, right here by Wilmington. Yeah. And uh, it's a trip, man, because sometimes we uh, uh, we tend to like hear things and see things, right? Like just this Friday, I was actually hearing one of your one of your uh, last um freaky tales and uh one of my uh, our bathrooms are like close by right like one next to the other yes. and when you, when you flush you can hear it you know you can hear it in the background so and in the mornings you know like you, you can tell someone is there and um i trip out because I, I was already like i don't know sometimes it's like especially when it's really really cold you can kind of like get a little vibe but we always like kind of dismiss it but um i trip out because uh as I'm, you know, like, uh, I'm being quiet, you know, and I hear the, the, my coworker, well, I'm thinking it's him, right? And he's, he's over there uh, on the on the side and, um, well, it's a school child, you know, when it, when it flushes and I'm yeah. like, all right, you know, get done, do my business. I get out and I go to my boss and because uh, the day before that, we were clowning on him about certain things. Yes. He's like, hey, what'd you do with him? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, what'd you do? Because uh, we call him uh, Hefe. We're like, oh, that, hey, he's not going to come to work. And that's the bathroom that he just goes to, like, specifically. Like, he, that's his bathroom. Yes. We would joke around. We're gonna, we say that we're going to put, like, a mat that says welcome home <laughs> every time he comes in. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and I was just like, what do you mean? I was like, there's, like, besides that, I thought I heard him. But then on top of that, like, it, it, you know, I heard the flush. He's like, no, like there's, he's not coming into work. Hmm. I was like, no, like, dude, I swear. I was like, I, that, that was him. Like I thought it, I heard him. Yeah. Cause like, you know, those are automatic. You like, you let come with a sensor. Yeah. So you have to like literally be moving around yeah. and we go in and he, he, he actually kind of gets scared too. Cause we, we've seen people kind of like pass by and we go around and we don't see them. We've heard footsteps, and we go around to check from the hallway or something like that. Nothing. We've gone in the morning where we're, like, the first two people to come in, and all our cabinets are open from our where we eat. And we take pictures of it, and we joke around with our boss, and we send it to him, like, hey, is it, like, somebody messing with us? Because we have three warehouses right there. And we always, we're still always saying, like, maybe somebody's, like, messing with us. But, yeah, we'll find cabinets, all of our cabinets open, and – I don't know, it's, just, it's a trip, but I, cause I was, and it, it gets to me because sometimes I'll be hearing your podcast yeah, and they'll creep up and they'll scare the crap out of me because I'm like concentrating and hearing um, like freaky tells and things like that. And I'm like, I was thinking like, damn, I want to like call and see like if I come through. Yeah. Because I, especially that, that warehouse, they, they always, I don't know, man, something about it. Sometimes you, you, you don't like, and the, the, the lights are sensors. So if way in the corner, if you're not there, the lights turn on. I mean, off. But then sometimes in the morning you'll see them like already right, like six in the morning, you'll see them like at least one of like one of the lights were area on the far end, like just on. Mm. And it's just a trip, man. It's a, there's only four of us there, and sometimes I don't know. You just feel like someone's like staring at you, man. No, you know a, what? Uh, I worked in warehouses before, man, and you know what? There's just something creepy about a certain old buildings, bro. Now let me ask you a question, caller. If you had to give your best explanation. What do you think that is? Do you think something par really paranormal is going on there? Uh, you know what? Besides hearing things, like I, I don't know, man. So I, I think one of some, somebody said that something would have happened there because we live where, uh, like, right in front of our warehouse. It's like, a, it's um, I think like Section Eight or something like that. Okay. So sometimes we come out and like our, one of my coworkers like. They'll go and smoke, and we heard certain people say, like, oh, like, well, because right there, it's, like, a bad area. And then you've heard, like, there's, since I've been there three years working in that area, there's, it's, like, um, we've had investigators mm -hmm. come and say, hey, someone just died right here in the corner, going to the camera, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. But, um, I, like, there's something there, because there's been times where, like, like I said, it's going forward, with, and me and my boss will be, like, on one side. And they're thinking that we're on one side because they can hear someone. And they'll come on like, hey, hey, like, were you guys just over there? And like, no, we're all, like, clearly we're right here. 
So like, no way. And it's during the daytime, obviously. That's what kind of trips us out more because, like, it's just it, like there was a clear one probably two weeks ago where um I were by the door and you hear footsteps and kind of like around 11, 12, my boss from the the three warehouse, the, the general one, he'll come and he'll this is like his last stop we'll work at before he goes home. Mm. And you can clearly hear the footsteps. And me and my me and my former, we look towards the door because we're expecting him to, you know, because we're hearing the footsteps clear. Yes. And nothing. We're like, maybe, you know, because we, we have to close the gate because people walk through there. And to be honest, you never know if somebody's looking through your car or anything. Right. So we're always worried of, of like, you know, hey, you can't park in here or whatever. And we look. And I looked. I was like, and you still hear the footsteps. And we kept walking. We're like, what the, like, and I looked at him like, hey, you, you heard the footsteps, right? He's like, yeah. Porque él, he's, uh, he's very paranoid. He is very paranoid. It's like, se le para los, hasta los pelos. Way, when he was telling me, hey, yeah. I just heard something. So he was like, he was telling me, hey, like, you, you, heard, you heard it, right? I'm like, yeah. Like, I heard it. But I don't know if something happened there, but uh, there's been more than a couple. Oh, then we had somebody else that told us. I don't know. See, that's why I kind of, like, they're probably messing with us. Yeah. When we had other people help us out for a job on the wall, randomly, you just said help, like dirty. Like, you can clear see help. And I was like, ah, nah, that's, that's probably one of these guys just, hmm. like, wow. messing with us. But but they had they had, uh, they had uh, said that they um, that they felt something here and they felt uncomfortable working hmm. at our warehouse. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I sent you watch. I sent you a picture of uh, on, your, on your Instagram uh-huh. when we went to go check. And the toilet papers like lo jalaron, like all the way like to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was yeah. that morning where we heard where I saw my cord was there, and yeah. I don't trip. It's a trip, man. Cause you just want you want to work comfortable, but sometimes we almost got used to it already. But nah, I think this is como que they like como si tiran una una pala on yeah. the ground, like bam, yeah. and it echoes. So a lot of just but, a lot of weird, crazy stuff know. going on there. So okay, caller. Brother, I'm going to let you go. I got to get these other calls. I got about six missed calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I want to thank you for taking the time and uh, making the call tonight. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. I was like, hey, you know what? People are not calling this time. I was like, let me. <laughs> let me. I was kind of shy. I was like, yeah, let me, let me go ahead and call, man. Because I got other stories, but like, this is just random. I, was, I wasn't even ready. I, thought, I just think you're, you're not going to pick up. But I was like, okay. all right, let's try it. Maybe next time we'll get another story. Absolutely. Okay. You have a blessed night now, caller. Thank you. You too, man. Okay, let's keep it pushing. The phone lines are open. Alex, a- any weird stuff ever happened at your shop? You know, honestly, in front of me, no. But um, one time I bought a Cadillac, and my dad says that they that him and his friends saw something come out of it, hmm. out of the back door. They okay. saw a shadow. We'll come back to that. Call it your name, and where are you calling from? Chris from Hollywood. Chris from Hollywood. How are you tonight? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm enjoying the phone call, sir. Uh, you have a, a comment or you have a story you wanted to share? Well, I have a qu- actually a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, how will you feel if late, like years pass, and you found out that Norby's or Alex was like a, a killer, a serial killer? Well, uh, you know, I've always said this that um, I have a pretty good judgment of character. I, I believe, and it's just me talking about myself, that I, I do have discernment and I would have picked up on something by now. And, uh, but, okay. let's, but let's just say that I didn't. And I, I find out later on, you know, that that was true, what you said. For an example, I'll play along. Um, if I was ever questioned... Okay. If I was ever questioned, I would just tell them the truth. These guys were always so kind and helpful, and I never saw anything. I was thrown off, and I'm actually Mm -hmm. disappointed in myself that I never picked up on not one thing that could have led me to believe that they were doing something behind closed doors. Right, right. So Uh, My other question is, you should have um, that other guest back again, um, that detective. You, you know what? I, I'm trying to get him back on Gil Carrillo. Yeah, Gil. Yeah, Gil Carrillo. Yeah, and for, for those of you that have never seen the Night Stalker documentary on Netflix, it's great. It truly, truly is. Definitely yeah. go check it out. 
right. I think that's it. That's all my questions. Are. All good, caller. I appreciate that. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Okay. The phone lines are open. So, Alex, you were telling me that something, I guess, a shadow came out of the backseat of a car. Yeah, a car that I bought and that I was work on, I'm working on. I was working on. Oh. Huh. Yeah, and um, there was a bite wound in the back of the car, too. So, like, that creeped them out even more. So, wow. Um, but I didn't really take it as anything, you know. But Okay. It, but two people saw it, so. Yeah, it confirmed that it was real. Yeah. Here we go. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony? My name is uh, P Dog. I'm calling from California. What's up, um, P Dog? So I wanted to just share some weird shit that happened to me. I'm gonna try and be a little bit like uh, to the point, kind of effective on how I tell the story. But so here it goes. Pretty much, I worked at this. This is like ten years ago, but I worked at this at a warehouse doing order selecting type work and I was an order selector at the time and I think some like a fucking ghost or spirit followed me home one day and was uh it might have been like choking me or some shit because I couldn't breathe that night that's basically what happened but the day of that incident the warehouse I worked in to, to provide a little context Multiple, and I mean multiple employees would all claim to see a little boy in the building. Uh, it was kind of like people would talk about it. We didn't know if it was like a joke. I never seen that shit, but I did have a weird experience. Um, order selecting one day <clears throat> where I thought, I thought I seen somebody kind of like approaching me from the corner of my eye, you know, that type of shit. I turned. And uh, it, it, it was like I, I saw someone walking into, like, where there was freight, you know, merchandise. And, uh, you know, I, it was just like I was tripping or something, but it felt like someone was there. That was the same day that when I went home that day with my girlfriend to my apartment, uh, we, were, we were eating dinner. And in the hallway of my apartment, I thought I'd seen, uh, I, I really felt someone in the fucking hallway and I started cussing it out. I told my girlfriend, hey, hang on, there's something right there in the in the living room. Yeah. So I started cussing it out and you know, I started telling that shit like get the fuck out of here and whoop de whoop. And uh later on that night when I was asleep with my girlfriend, I just I, you know, when people talk about it, they feel like something's choking them because they can't breathe that night. Right. That's what I felt for like that's what I felt that night. And after you know yeah, that went it went away obviously and uh nothing never happened again but when i when i later found out after the fact one of my managers had told me um hey look check out this picture and they, they showed me a picture and i went to confirm it but basically in that spot where i thought i saw someone approaching me of the building of the warehouse i worked at yes there was like a palm print it was a red palm print of someone's hand it could have been in red paint or something, but yes. it was in the color red, and it was like an imprint on the wall. And I seen it. Uh, what that was, like, I don't, I don't know. Nobody really knew because that building, was, it was like being rented. Uh, so, you know, I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was in the same area where I thought I'd seen some shit. Wow. And you know, How long were you a notice selector for, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, shit. At that time? I've done that type of work a lot, like in different buildings. Like I've worked in in different places. Uh, right now, I'm in Northern California. I've been all over the place, but a, a long time. Okay. The reason why I say that's because I'm very familiar with being an order selector. I uh, worked at Rouse the first five years. I was an order selector. You know, those are the jobs that you get when you have no seniority. And uh, so I was order selector. I was building uh, pallets. Uh, pretty much just fruit, vegetables, meat, whatever. Uh, all of them were about at least about six feet high, maybe with a maybe a hundred and twenty pieces per pallet. And um, there's people that uh, that's not an easy job. Being an order selector, at least for us there in thirty degree weather, it's not an easy job, especially when you're working, uh, you know, maybe six days a week and you're working ten to twelve hours daily. Okay, it's, it's a tough job. I've seen people, sad to say, fall over and die while, while order selecting. 
You know, it's not an older man's job either. And um, I bring that up because I'm familiar with someone with your story when you say that I've been an order selector and I saw something. I saw the same thing too. I like to call them shadow people. I don't know if it's a spirit. I don't know if it's a demon, but it looks like a shadow. Now, something you said stuck with me because you said, I felt it around my neck. I felt like it was choking me because I couldn't breathe. Most people that have dabbled into going to look for somewhat entities or ghosts or the paranormal have always told me they've come back with something feeling like it's around their neck and a lot of times it won't allow them to. It's, it's very hard for them to breathe. So when you said that, that rung a bell with me. That's, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, so there's other people that have felt and have gone through what you've, what you've just shared. Hello, caller. Uh, yeah, no, I was going to say that uh, I never uh, I never looked at uh, some of them. Um, yeah, like I said, a bunch of people claim they've seen shit. And I always jokingly said, I think a lot of the, the viewers, too, if they work in that type of environment, yeah, you know that there's a lot of funky shit that happens in, like with employees backstabbing each other and shit like that. I always jokingly said that little ghost, that little boy, spirit that you guys see it's probably a manifestation of everybody's fucking cheese man and negative energy in that building that's a great point uh that's that's, that's kind of like how i jokingly you know made sense of it and yes. um you know kind of like your show bro uh, it's a little bit like uh like how you've mentioned before an homage to la mano peluda yes and even though you know we sometimes we see shit spirits and shit like that just like that mano peluda how that show historically ended yeah uh como va ese dicho que más miedo tenle más miedo a los vivos que a los muertos because sí. they do all they do so much funky fucking shit you know what i mean yes i truly do believe that that's it okay caller i i truly appreciate you taking the time and being transparent and sharing that with us thank you Okay, Alex, um, it, it, when I was working at, the, at that warehouse, uh, Rouse, right there in Compton, um, there were several dudes that would work always together. And everything was always gossiping. Everything was always cursing. Everything was about porn. Everything was negativity. Everything was all hate. And I'm going to tell you something. Just like what he said, you know what? Uh, um, that was probably a manifestation of their negative energy. And I'm going to continue that when I get this call. Call it your name and where are you calling from? Tony from VA. Yes, from VA. How are you doing tonight? Pretty good, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. You know what? I'm thankful for another year. God has been good. Thankful for my grandchildren. Um, I, I love my life, bro. So thank you. Same to you, man. Happy birthday as well. We share a birthday month and a name. Thank kind of you. interesting, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I got a, I got a good story for you. Yes, sir. This was uh, many years back. So this was on the East Coast here at a, a very old hospital in Arlington. And uh, I worked here for about a year when I was a kid, you know, first real job out of high school. And uh, I was working in their little food service department and filling vending machines and stuff like that. And uh, so basically, I would just take a trip around the hospital, you know early, early in the morning, throughout the day, whatever. And uh, there was always this one guy that kind of struck me as weird, you know? Yeah. And uh, this guy, he worked in the basement, like in the trash room, essentially, the, the, the deepest, darkest spot of the hospital, basically. Yes. And, uh, and I, like, I remember my grandmother always would tell me, you know, your eyes are basically like the windows to your soul. And I always took that with me. And... Uh, and I something just read me really wrong about this guy, you know? And I never could place it. And uh, the long story short, about 10 years later down the road, just reading a random news story. <clears throat> and I had moved from the area, you know, been gone from that job for a very long time. Yes. And I see this guy's face in the news story. And I was like, I know that face. Yeah. It was a very sinister look. And I thought about it for a second. And I was like, that's the guy that used to work in the basement. 
Mm. And so long story short, this guy was a, uh, he was a murder rapist. Wow. Wow. And, uh, you know, I guess it just took a long time to catch him. And, and I guess the way they finally tracked him down was through his, uh, his relatives. And I guess it was like through 23 and me, believe it or not. Wow. Well, you know, but, uh, you know, as soon as I saw that face, man, I was like, I knew exactly who that was. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's funny. It's like what we were saying earlier, you never know who you could be working next to, who you could be talking to on social media or any of that. You just don't know. And yet there's many people that just trust these people because they're cool. They sound nice. He doesn't sound like that. No, we have to use wisdom, man. You know, we don't know who these people are. And here you were working with this person. You know, you didn't know this. No, it's crazy, man. But, you know, like I said, that face is so recognizable. Yeah, yeah. You never forget it. Yeah, no, thank you, man. Uh, truly appreciate you taking the time and, you know, calling in tonight and being a part of the show, man. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, you have a good night, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. That was, that was another freaky tale. So, Alex, before we get this other phone call... Um, so these guys used to all work together at, at the warehouse and every time people that had like a good, like would get that gut feeling or use the, their discernment, they used to always say, man, every time I go and I work with those guys, there's like such a dark negative cloud there. And yeah. I truly do believe Alex that people, when they spew out all that energy, all that bad energy, it's there, man. Yeah, it's there, and people can feel it and see it. Here we go. We got another call. Call it your name, and where are you calling from? Oh man. Okay. Hey, you know, at least you called in. You made a noise, so I'll give you credit on that one. So, all right, let's keep it going. Hey, but. That- that kind of reminds me of that Ghostbusters movie. Uh, I think it was part two. Slimer? Yeah, or where they go under the ground and it's just everyone's negative energy. Just uh, Yes, moving. the negative energy. And I truly, truly do believe that you continue to spew all that out. People will sense it and see it because it, it oozes out of people. Here we go. Call it your name and where are you calling from? This is uh, Mark from Bell Gardens. How you doing uh, from Bell Gardens? How you doing tonight? All right, all right. How you doing, Tony? I'm doing good, brother. I'm blessed, and I can never complain. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I have a freaky tale. I called in uh, probably like a couple months back about uh, a story about my my grandmother and uh, her encounter with some aliens. Yes, please share. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, this was back in like '93 when I was a you know little little morro. Yes. Uh, my my grandmother told me that um, you know, some aliens that came over to the pad. To to um, you know, they they were talking to her. Well, she was a uh, she was like in paralysis, sleep paralysis. Yes. And um, they had the they did telekinesis, like they talked to her through the mind. They had no lips moving and stuff. And um, they had mentioned to her that um. They were, you know, they were there to hurt her and stuff, and that they were gonna meet her again in a rural area. You know, and uh, we ended up getting a pat in Tecate. I don't know if you remember the last time when I had talked to you about this. Yes, yes, this uh, a freaky tale. Yeah, a, a little portion of it I, I recall, but please forgive me because we do get a lot of phone calls. You know, and it's been it's been a minute since the last time we talked. But please proceed. Uh, 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 share with us. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to. I don't want to. Backtrack and say too much stuff, but um, point being, um, we ended up getting a, a little rancho in Tecate. Yes. Uh, my gra- you know, my grandpa, he built it up. We, you know, we had we had a pad out there and stuff, and um, you know, it, it just uh, what the aliens told my grandma ended up happening by us getting that that pad out there. Wow. And um, while we were out there, you know, my grandpa built a church, and uh, you know, it was a, uh, in the middle of nowhere area. There was like a couple of shacks shack people people that you know they didn't really have too much and um every time i would go over there for my vacations from from you know la um i would always take all my old clothes and you know we would take stuff to get to the people 
And, um, you know, on Sunday they would come to service. And, um, you, you know, it was uh, weird stuff that would happen in the nighttime after, like, when everybody would leave, you know, you, you would hear, um, like, some type of chanting, like, like it sounded like a bunch of Indians, you know, and um, I don't know if it was, like, I'm sure it was the coyotes or something, but it sounded wicked, man. Wow. Um, like, some, some kind of weird spirit was there or something. And, um, you know, I used to just trip out on that. Hmm. Okay. And, you know, after um, me tripping out or whatever on all that crap, you know, when I, I would talk to my grandma about the, the alien story that she had told me back in 93, once I was a little bit older and stuff, you know, and she was just telling me um, she, that she was still waiting for them to come talk to her, but she was still on the mission that they had told her to, to do, to, to, you know, get a place in a rural area and we we're going to speak to her again. And um, that never left my mind, man. And, um, as I got older, every time I go to Tecata, I'd always think about that. And um, when I was in high school, I used to play ball. I played basketball. It was pretty good. And uh, there was like a little court that, that was right there in, in, in that area, in our little Pueblo, you know? And uh, all the time, when I would go play ball right there to work out, all the little kids from the village, they would all come on their bikes, and they would all just come and watch me. And I'd start showing up, doing tricks or whatever the fuck, you know? You know, passing the ball, but they would just look at me strange, and they would just leave on their bike and stuff. You know, and, and I started thinking, I'm like, damn, like, you know, it was it was just bizarre. Yeah. Like, every time, you know, when every time I go to Mexico, everybody just stare at us and stuff. Like, I don't know if it's because we had more, a little bit more than them, you know, or, or yeah. what. Yeah. But then I started thinking, you know, what if, uh, you know, we're some type of, uh, some type of alien or something, you know, that, that, that was meant to go there to, to help people. Yeah. You know, it, you know, so so I don't know. I just always seen that seen that as a bizarre situation yeah. in my life. Yeah. You, now let me ask you this, because you said that the aliens in 1993 spoke to your grandmother and said to, to get her a place. You guys got it. Did they ever come back to speak to her that you know of? Did I, Did she ever tell me if they came back? Yeah, if, if the aliens came back. You know what? She she never told me that they did. She never told me that they came back. And um, you know, she, uh, I took care of her before she passed away last year, and um, it, it was it was a good experience to be with her before she passed. And you know, she was very spiritual. She was really into God. Yeah. And um, you know, I would always ask her. I remember, like, like in the nineties, I would ask her, "Hey, Grandma, like, hey, how do we know when the world's gonna end?" And she said, "Like, we don't." But, but in the Bible that it says in Revelation that not exactly these people, but in a different way that she was saying that when China, Russia, and the United States have a conflict and they go to war, that's when the world's going to end. And, um, you know, I know there's all kinds of crap happening right now in Russia and, and China. So like with all this crazy stuff that's happening in, in today in 2024, uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if something big is about to happen soon. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, um, on my other podcast, um, I'm going to have Norbert. We're going to do a news of Norby's tomorrow. I don't like to usually tell people ahead of time, but uh, he does have a question about the eclipse coming up in, I believe, April 8th. And uh, there is a woman okay. go going around saying that that could possibly be the eclipse that the Book of Revelation talks about. When it comes to Bible prophecy, I will say this, that I know it very, very well. I'm not saying that I know it better than anyone, but I know it very, very well. So tomorrow I'm going to give my take on that eclipse. And uh, some people say that if it is the eclipse from the book of Revelation, then certain things are supposed to happen. But your grandmother was right on with Bible prophecy when he talks about China and Russia. She was right on. So... But we're going to pick up on that tomorrow. Right on. Yeah. Thank you, caller. I appreciate you, you know, uh, taking the time to be a part of the show. Hey, likewise, Tony. Hey, you're a badass DJ. I still bump the music. Thank you. You guys, um, you guys have a good Easter Sunday tomorrow. Absolutely. Happy Resurrection Day. Have a blessed one. Okay, Alex, we're good? Okay, now, what I was telling you about what people were telling me that... Um, Whenever they would go to that certain part of that warehouse, that 
that they would just feel the the the, the dark cloud of, of negative energy. And I do believe, Alex, that there are some people that do carry that that negative energy around them, you know, with them. The things that they speak, maybe they're so full of hate, maybe they're so full of anger, maybe they're miserable, maybe they feel that somebody wronged them and they just they, they've been keeping that in and every time they come out or, or they go out and talk to someone, it just comes out. Always remember this, guys. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, what's in here is going to come out of here. It's what's going to come out of here. If you have good here, good is going to come out of here. If you have bad here, it's the bad is going to come out of here. All you have to do is look, listen, and observe a person the way he talks, and he'll tell you or she will tell you everything you need to know about that person. If all they do is gossip, if all they do is talk about people, if all they do is talk negativity, if all they talk about is if it wasn't for bad luck, they wouldn't have luck at all, separate yourself from those people. You don't allow those people to drain the peace and the joy and the happiness that's in your life. Don't allow them. Don't allow them. I separate myself from people like that. That's why my circle is small. When I tried to see good in other people and tried to bless them, you know what I got in return? Nothing but negativity because they had nothing good to give me. So from here on out, if I feel led to help someone and bless them, then I will do it. But I just won't, can't leave my doors open just for anybody to come in and try to take advantage of my kind heart. Alex, anything you want to say, share, anything we have on the... Any super chats or anything? Um, yeah, there is actually a super Go ahead, read them off, please. Okay, it's just one from 94, 94M. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 94M, but oh. I'm going to say 94EM. Okay. So um, he dropped 499. He said, do you think brujeria only works because God wants to test your faith? Sa sa salute and happy weekend. That's a big, that's a big question for me to answer. But I do not believe, that, and this is just me, or my, my opinion. I do not believe brujeria is from God. Okay, I don't believe that God will tempt you. God tempts no man. Okay, um, when Jesus was tempted, he was tempted by the tempter or by the devil. I do not believe that. Um, you know, I, does God test you? Yes, I, I, I believe I believe that there are tests that He puts us through. Um, but I, again, that, that's just a, a that, that's a question the size of this room that I do not have a small answer for. So that's the smallest answer that I can give you. That God doesn't tempt you, but He will test you, and there there is a difference. There is a difference. So, uh, anything else, Alex? Um, no, that's going to be all. But you know what? I do want to tell people to be careful out there because there are some weirdos, some creeps. And if anything, the Internet has showed us that they're not just they don't look a certain way. They're they're everywhere. All different shapes, sizes and colors. Yep. You know, and a lot of you guys, let me say this. Be careful with some of these women out here and women be careful with some of these men out here. Okay, especially on the internet, especially on the internet, you know, they, they they're not who who they're posting to be. They're not. Go ahead, Alex. Well, I would say a good example would be like the whole Diddy situation. You know, like people mentioned it here and there, stuff like that. But now it's coming to light years later that you know, even though to some people he might be the nicest man on earth, yeah, or whatever. You know, he really has a dark past. No, I, I will say this, Alex, okay? I, I want to say this, and this is pertaining to Diddy. Now, say that all of these allegations, because more and more and more, not only is it getting darker, it's getting creepier, it's, it's getting more, even more evil, the allegations, the stories that are surrounding this man. Yep. But let's just say that these hypothetical accusations are true. This guy was a monster this whole time. Yeah. This guy was a monster, okay? Now... Once again, in a hypothetical scenario, if these stories are true and he was this monster, why didn't people speak up earlier? You could have helped people's lives. You could have helped people's lives. Don't go near that monster. 
you know, there's times, and I don't like doing this, that I'll say certain people's names to warn people about these people. Be careful with these people. And then people turn against me. Oh, you shouldn't be saying, I'm trying to help you. You know, Alex, say that mean you live next door to each other, okay? Yeah. I had no kids. You have three kids. Say your kids are three, five, and eight years old. Yeah. And I knew that a child molester had just moved in across the street. I knew. What kind of friend would I be to you if I never told you? Be careful. A child molester just moved in. Imagine me never telling you, and he did something to your children. Could I have helped you? Yeah. Could have warned their kids. 2024, it's the year of the truth. It's going to be a lot more people exposed. Uh, let me just go ahead and give, um, um, man, I'm passionate, especially when it comes to children. Um, I have grandbabies, man. So, um, let me just give my shout out to the Hip Hop Jedi, um, Marvelous Inc., my co host, Norbert, News of Norbies, Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise, my son, B. Scandalous, and to our moderator, Magic Girl. Much love and respect. Thank everybody in the live chat. Thank all the callers. Thank everyone who enjoys the show. I'm keeping it going for you guys. Make sure you guys share uh, and follow us on Freaky Toast Podcast on Instagram. Thank you. Much love and respect. We'll see you guys here next week. <laughs>